Hello and welcome to the 21 Days Face Your Fears Online Challenge. I'm Bristana Mantu, Transformation Facilitator, Energy Therapist and Writer, and my mission is helping people heal their past in order to be able to live the life of their bliss. I'm super excited to be your host on your journey of personal growth through fearlessness, empowerment and the power of community. Today I have a special guest, his name is Tom Fortes-Meyer. Hi Tom! Hi! Tom is a Harley Street hypnotherapist, happiness author, international of the Free Mind Project charity and creator of We Are One, inspirational drug and alcohol free positivity raves. Tom is passionate about helping people live with more peace, power and purpose. As well as helping celebrities, top business people and world-class athletes excel in their fields, he has presented all over the world in all sorts of environments from anti-corruption training in Nigeria to delivering emotional intelligence training in prisons. Tom is contagiously enthusiastic about the power of the human mind and the innate beauty of the human heart. Welcome Tom and thank you very much for joining us. My absolute pleasure. Okay, so let's get started about uh, the topic of fearlessness. And my first question for you is, what was the greatest fear that you ever had? Um, and how did you manage to overcome it? I think, you know, there have been some moments where I've undertaken the challenge. Um, but I think, I think for me, the greatest, the greatest fear is being able to truly be, truly be honest about who you really are. You know, like to really work out, oh, that, that, this is really what I stand for. This is really what I stand for. Even, even the other night that, that we, uh, we are one, you know, I was in the changing room and I was wearing like a Mexican Day of the Dead outfit with a massive red cape, right? And that wasn't easy for me in the changing room. I was like, this is a really overblown outfit, you know, this is, you know, and that's okay, some people come really dressed up, most people don't, you know, they maybe wear some glitter, or something, you know, it's, they come to have a big dance, and I really, you know, I, I found myself laughing about the fact that it's like, I want to be able to dress up in something ridiculous, and play amazing music, and, and create something like that, and I realized that that, that's the, that is the biggest thing, it's like, really, really honestly working out, you know, who we are and having the courage to just go, yeah, this is, this is what I stand for, you know? I'm like, I know that if some people that were thinking about coming to see me for a really poignant issue in their past, see me wearing that, will be like, really, is that the guy to do serious inner child healing with? He goes out the weekend and wears a mirrorball helmet, you know? <laughs> it's like, and it's like, I, I want, I want, I want to be me and for people to go, that, that guy, that guy who goes out the weekend who wears a mirable helmet, that's the guy I want to help with my, my wounds from the past. And it's taken me a long time to have the courage to do that. And I think, so I think writing my book took the most courage. I mean, it turns out that my editors actually edited out <laughs> quite a lot of the stuff that I was really scared to share. Because I, I didn't want to come from the place of being like the all-knowing, all-perfect being. I don't think that serves anyone. I don't think anyone is that. So I wanted to be really candid and honest about some of my greatest failings and some of my most embarrassing moments, which includes being held at knife point by a client and then knocked out by my own client. Wow. That's still in in the book actually but the original story was like 10,000 words long and it was really funny and really dark and really odd because um, he was wearing an outfit I mean so it was a weird day um, but you know my publishers were terrified that it would make me sound a, a little bit like a nutter because it was some very avant-garde <laughs> kind of therapy I was trying okay. but you know it was it ended up being beautiful you know kind of so I think writing the book was my biggest fear to really be honest about myself in that way yeah, it takes courage to be vulnerable, to be authentic, and to expose some of the maybe most intimate stuff. But then, when you once you do that, you feel like, ah, oh, I can show the world who I really am, and it's okay. And uh, some people might not like me, other people will love me, and that's okay. I'm just being true to myself, and that's the most empowering and healing thing you can do to yourself. Totally agree. T totally agree. 
Yeah, and yeah. it's interesting because in the conversations I've had already with some of the people I've interviewed so far, um, the common thread was this fear of being true to yourself and fear of exposing yourself to the world and sharing your truth and your authenticity and what you really stand for. So what do you think are yeah. the main fears or main blockages that people stumble across when they're trying to expose themselves who really are and how to go about dealing with them? Yeah, I mean, for me, in all the research I've done, there are lots of like micro fears, but for me there are really three universal fears that underpin all of our suffering. And, um, and they are absolutely key to stopping us from really being ourselves. And so, and so in all my research, I kind of worked out that there's really three pillars that we need to learn to kind of have freedom and happiness in our life. And so we need peace, we need power, and we need purpose. So within peace, it's all about learning emotional intelligence, letting go of all the resentments, the frustrations, the fears, uh, the, and the aggressions that are holding us back. I'll come to the three fears. There's each, a fear for each of these pillars. Pillar two, it's about success psychology. It's about really learning that, that there's brilliance inside us and how do we bring it out. And then, um, so that's success psychology. And in pillar three, purpose, is all about understanding the interconnected nature of life, the oneness. So it's all about oneness philosophy, right? And so those three, those three areas, they dissolve the three fears. And the three fears in each pillar, so the thing that disrupts our peace more than anything is the idea that I'm not good enough, mm. right? I'm not, I am, I am lacking. I'm broken because of my story, or I'm not tall enough, or thin enough, or happy enough or educated enough or qualified enough or who am I to make a video or who you know all this stuff that's that can stop us from going hey you know what this is me in pillar two the stuff that gets the most in the way of our power which is when we connect to our power then we know I am the right person at the right time in the in the right place with the right skills to be in flow and do what the universe is asking for in this moment right and the belief that most gets in the way of that is I'm uh, something external is the solution. Mm. Yeah, it's the source of all our materialism, it's the source of all that thinking, oh, I need to have another degree, or I need to read another book, or go on another course, or I need to be a bit thinner before I do this. Or, you know, it's just this whole idea that um, there's something outside of me, and usually something in the future that will be added to me to make it okay. So that stops us. Loads of people are procrastinating, fiddling on the details and just not putting themselves out there, being themselves. And in pillar three, the thing that stops us from being on purpose, which is what puts us out there, because I believe our purpose is just being ourselves, as joyfully as we can be, you know. I say that like it's easy. I mean, it's a massive thing. I, I don't believe it's about doing charitable works and um, digging holes in Africa and and changing the world, I believe it's about being a true and free expression of who we are. Now, when we're doing that, we are likely to do charitable work. We're likely to be a good community member. But it, if we do that because it lights us up, not because there's a problem. So the, the thought, the limiting belief, the fear that it runs in that pillar is I'm separate and alone mm -hmm. in essentially a disappointing, meaningless universe. If we're that, well, then we're all inadequate, and all three fears really cycle together to create re resentment, resistance, a no to life. So those three fears, I'm not good enough, something external is the solution, and I'm separate and alone. That underpins all of the suffering in the world. So I love this 21-day face your fears challenge. Those are the ones I'd go for. You know, It's like, what do your people need to do to, to get that they're... They're not just okay in spite of their past. They are able to be amazing precisely because of it, right? Yeah. Something unique in their painful story is the goal of their future, right? It's not, it's, not, it's not like, oh, I've got to get on with plan B because plan A is broken because I'm damaged, you know? It's like, no, plan A is working out how, how your damaged plan A is part of plan A, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all part of the process, the ups and downs, and uh, yeah, failures sometimes are just blessing in disguise, showing us where we need to grow more and how we can expand our limitations and break free from our limiting beliefs. So, 
I know that this belief of I'm not good enough is the n number one limiting belief that everybody all over the world has in a way or another, in a degree yep. or another. And it's also due to the this competi competitiveness in our society. Someone's always going to be better or someone's more ex successful and maybe I'm not good enough because I haven't got that posh nice car or that great yeah. job good paying job so what do we do about this not good enough belief so for me you're right that, that the material world is very ready to make that worse so in my experience the I'm not good enough belief where it really begins is when we're younger and I'm sure you know this when we're younger, when our needs aren't met, yeah. it's very rare for a child to go, oh, I'm six and I'm going to objectively assess that my parents are failing me right now. Um, one, we're not very objective, um, but two, we idealize our parents, not because of loyalty, but because of survival. Mm. If we thought that the people we're dependent upon are not safe, we would freak out, right? Totally freak out. So we don't do that. What we do is we go, no, 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 they're fine. They're doing everything right. But if our heart knows that they're not doing us right, well, if they're perfect and yet their treatment of us doesn't feel good, well, then the only way we can make sense of that is if we deep down believe, oh, it's, I'm not okay. Something's wrong with me. Something's wrong with me. That isn't just an incidental, oh, no, I'm not very good. There's a department in our brain that is actually choosing that mm -hmm. as a defense. And that is, for me, the Free Mind Project is all about helping people realize that switch, that I'm not good enough, comes from a very specific place. And um, it's that decision to defend against it. So I spend a lot of my time with my clients helping them feel courageous enough to go on those journeys, to find that young self. And there's a six-year-old happily playing in their energy system. And I go up to it and go, oh, you think your parents are okay? Well, bad luck, <laughs> you know. I have to burst through the denial. Mm. And they have to actually, instead of pretending that they're awful, they have to feel that, no, actually, you are perfect and you deserved a lot better. Yeah. And actually, you've been let down. And they're like, I don't, they don't they, you know, their six-year-old doesn't want to hold that. But actually, when they can hold that, the whole thing opens up. It's like the whole thing can be felt. So I get them to verbalize today I don't really like my daddy, you know, today mummy isn't actually really there for me, or the thoughts that they never would have said, said yeah. but needed to be said, and the feelings that needed to be felt, and when they can, when they can do that, then that idea that there's something wrong with them dissolves away, because it was never a truth, it was a defense. Yeah, yeah, I like that, and uh, I totally resonate with your work, as I'm also doing in my transformation work, inner child work, and I found it to be very very effective tool in in holding that little scared child whose needs were not met or who didn't express what needed to express in an unconditional embrace to make it feel that it's whole and complete and divine and there's nothing wrong with him and that he deserves all the love and attention in the world that he needs and if the parents weren't there to offer that then it's up to us to do the self-parenting bit to parent our inner children and this way we're going to get to that place of feeling whole, complete in ourselves and we're not going to need other people's validations or approvals or uh, attachments to other people, emotional dependencies for us to feel like we're whole. Totally agree. Ten thousand percent. Totally aligned. Beautifully put and exactly accurate. And I believe like I was asked the other day by a spiritual teacher, he's like, what's the most important thing you've learned? I was like, inner child work, 10,000%. It is the most transformational force in the world. I believe it would, it would just dissolve the way that I'm not okay, and that is the source of all of our troubles. Absolutely, I love that. Um, what about the, um, something external uh, fulfills me? Yeah, so for me... The key, to, the key to dissolving that belief is understanding success psychology. Okay. And that's really looking at um, how so much of our identity and the behavior has been defined by conditioning. Right? So the kind of motto I have for within that kind of area is like, you're not the program, you're the programmer. <laughs> so success psychology teaches you 
okay, how have I been conditioned and how do I recondition myself, right? So it's, it, you know, in a small way it can be like when I learned snowboarding, you know, I'd been conditioned from everyone that had tried snowboarding that it's really hard, you spend four days falling over, you need to put a cushion on your ass, it's going to be painful, you're going to be bruised. I was like, I'm not subscribing to that, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to imagine... And so I hypnotized myself and I imagined that I could snowboard and I watched snowboarding videos and I absorbed it in my head. And I hypnotized myself to believe that I was an ex-snowboarder who'd hit a tree and had amnesia, right? <laughs> and that I couldn't remember that I could snowboard, but that I could. So I watched videos like that was me snowboarding, mm. you know? Okay. And as a result of that, with that empowered belief, actually when I snowboarded, it's funny, I told my friend and he'd really struggled to learn. And I, I stood up on the board, right, to start snowboarding. And the first thing I did was I fell down on my ass, you know. <laughs> and he, to him, it was like, it was, he thought I'd been really cocky and he thought that was hilarious. But then I stood up and I, and I snowboarded down. It was a blue run. It was an easy run. But I snowboarded for about a mile without stopping. First, first run. And I'm not saying that to be arrogant. I'm saying that the human mind, if charged with real belief and trust and faith, we can bring out from ourselves extraordinary, extraordinary power. And for me, it's not about being the best tennis player or the best mathematician or the best sports person, even though it's great to learn skills how to improve that. It's when we can trust that we are perfect, because we've got the peace and we see the interconnection of all things. When we can trust that we're perfect, it means that we are the right person at the right time. And if we can trust the intelligence that moves through us, then what will happen is what's meant to happen. Mm. Yeah, I was meant to fall over that first time because my friend would have hated himself if I hadn't just fallen over once at least. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I, and I, you know, could have beaten myself up at that moment and then I would have been rubbish for the rest of it, but I didn't. I was like, you've never done this before. It's okay to fall over the first time you stand up on the board, you know? And so success psychology is this whole school of thought, which is that how do your language patterns impact your behavior? How do, how do your expectations, what are the pictures you make in your mind? This is the kind of realm which, you know, other people might call NLP, you know. For me, mm -hmm. it's more than that. It's a whole body of knowledge, but it's like the pictures, the thoughts, the feelings, the physiology, your expectations, your beliefs. We are, we are not those programs. We are the programmer. We can learn how to get in there and tweak that stuff and, and then be in flow. Mm. And if we can be in flow, then we're working for the universe and we're in the right place at the right time and what happens is meant to happen, you know? Mm. And when I've got that now, I very rarely plan what I'm going to do. I have an overriding idea and I have an intention and intention is, I, for flow to work, you need to have a kind of, a, a, an in-principle destination, yeah? A clear intention, Why, what, what's this for, right? And then get out of the way, you know? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that what you did at the open mic? Yes, that's exactly what I did. Um, and it was the first time I managed to really let go of any ideas of how people might perceive me or how I might be moving around, how do I look in front of an audience. And once I've let go of all of those fears, I simply entered into my body and felt the word and the message and opened my heart and words fl flowed effortlessly through me and it was such a beautiful moment. I loved it so much. And yeah. related to this concept of program, which basically yeah. means our conditioned responses, limiting limited beliefs, um, emotional responses as well, we call this the program, how we've been conditioned to behave, believe, act and yeah. feel. Um, and then you said to we have the power to recondition ourselves, but I don't I, I don't understand this reconditioning thing. Isn't it more a thing of deconditioning rather than reconditioning ourselves, like letting go of all the program and simply following our heart and it's being for me free. it's a bit of, it's for me it's a bit of both. Okay. And pillar one, so I have all this terminology and all these distinctions within each pillar. So for me, pillar one is deprogramming letting go of all of the pain, the resentment, all the stuff that throws you off center. Because you can't be in flow 
on a stage if you're if you're if you're still holding on to you can experience bits of flow but flow in life comes from being at peace with everything that's occurred only when we can be at peace with everything that's brought us to the moment can we be free in the moment right yeah so it can be in gradation we can be partly in flow right but it's like so pillar 1 is about deprogramming all the resistances all the negativities all all of that stuff and that is limiting beliefs for me, the reprogramming, when I first started doing it, you're right, right? The reprogramming was like, oh, I'm going to work out harder. I'm going to be better at mental arithmetic. I was working on reprogram myself. And that works, right? You can recondition your programming and improve many areas of your life. But now, for me, the programming I work on is just around my belief that I am complete and capable. <laughs> Because I spent years not believing that. Yeah. So I'm no longer trying to make myself different, but I'm using conditioning to deepen my connection to the idea that I am the right guy at the right time. Mm, yeah? Because okay. yeah. I find it hard. I, got, I was very lucky to be asked to speak at Alternatives. And I, it was a big ambition of mine to speak on the main stage at Alternatives. They do these amazing talks on Monday. It's in James's church, beautiful church in central London. Marianne Williamson's talk there, Dalai Lama, Deepak Chopra. It was, it was an amazing honor. Wow. And I wanted to do it the way I like to do it, which was not to have a plan, you know. <laughs> and I had, you know, an hour and a half to fill. And I, have, I tend to have my first line ready because I just like to have that. That helps. Uh, but just before going on, oh, my God. My brain went mental. It was like, this is the biggest gig of your life. There's amazing people in the audience, and you haven't prepared anything. You idiot, what are you doing? You're going to blow your best chance. And I was like, and so then I, you know, that's when programming was really helpful. I was just like, you know, hold on a minute. You know, let's just get back into flow. How do I run my mind right now when I need to change it to get back to faith? Okay. It's like sometimes we have to the deprogramming to let go of stuff and we also that reprogramming to rebuild that mindset where's my optimal state and that includes physiology you know suddenly I was like that oh you know and I was like okay relax your shoulders put your head back breathe deeply what is what is the mechanics of flow you know hmm. but I, I mean I agree that for me really it's more about instead of rebuilding something it's about alignment with what's being called for okay right they um does that make sense? Yeah, it does. That's so this made me think of reprogramming, retraining your, your mind in the following sense. So we let go of the limiting beliefs and the pains and grudges and limitations from our past. And now yeah. we feel like we're in alignment with our purpose. We find out what our purpose is. And then we retrain our mind in order to be in alignment with our heart purpose. This is what reprogramming okay. means, and then yeah. we use our mind as it's meant to be, as a tool. As a tool, Not exactly. Mind doesn't know exactly where we need to be. Our mind just needs to help us get there. In a yeah. with the logical I mean, reason. Yeah, exactly. You totally get it. Oh, okay. Totally. Yeah, it's exactly it. And for me, I like. <coughs> I I use this analogy a lot. Michelangelo, right? He carved the statue David, which, which is like four meters tall, right? It's arguably one of the best statues in the world. <coughs> it was carved out of incredibly difficult marble. Two other sculptors had discarded this marble because they couldn't work it, right? <coughs> so he took pride in persevering. <coughs> Excuse me. And he created this extraordinary sculpture. And someone said to him, how did you make David? And he said, I didn't make David. David was already perfectly formed inside the rock. I just removed everything that wasn't David. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the deprogramming and reprogramming is that, you know. It is the deprogramming of everything that isn't aware. But for me, the reprogramming is that little chisel you use, you know, just to unearth you know, just to unearth your natural state. Mm. Yeah, to, and you're right, to reprogram the way of thinking that can live with flow, you know? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I get that. And I hope our viewers also understand this. Um, maybe let's put it in a more easy, easy form to digest. 
this yep. idea of unraveling our true selves, reconditioning ourselves to to become in alignment with our true selves. For me, this is yeah. very easy to understand, but I'm not sure maybe everybody gets it. So maybe like to rephrase it in a very practical, pragmatic okay. manner. Okay. So the first stage is to let go of the things that you feel are wrong. To find those things that we feel resentment about or upset about or sad about or inadequate about. And then the second phase is to, is to really believe in ourselves. To believe that we know what we're doing and that if we can trust that, um, in the moment we will know what to do. Mm. And it's not about qualifications and it's not about um, education and it's not about training. It's about faith. It's about trusting that there's something that wants to be spoken through you. And, um, and it's generally, if your focus is on love and truth. So it's like, the deprogramming is letting go of the fears and the doubts. And the reprogramming is about developing the belief and the courage to speak the truth from a place of love. Mm, beautiful. Okay, mm, do you have like a practical tip when somebody is experiencing a fear? Like... Uh, technique that would enable them to overcome it, face it? First of all, to put their arms around the fear, not to fight it, you know? Mm -hmm. Put a loving arm around the shoulder, give it a little kind of big, big brotherly or big sisterly smile, you know? To change breathing, to make sure that there's water under the tongue that cuts the adrenaline loop. Mm -hmm. So really great before you present to make sure you're hydrated and literally keep water under the tongue. But anytime there's fear there, um, change the breathing, get water under the tongue, and welcome, welcome the fear, because it's giving you an opportunity for greater self-knowledge. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and this is why I love associating personal growth with overcoming our fears. The more we uh, acknowledge that these fears can be something that we can work with, not against, it's a great opportunity for us to grow. and. Oh. Mm -hmm. manifest our potential that is awaiting for our permission to manifest. Beautiful. Beautiful. So yeah, the other thing is the best way the best way to handle your fears is to make a practice of facing them. Which mm -hmm. is what twenty one days is about. Yes, this is what it's all about. Honing the practice and twenty one days it's said to be uh, the time span in which a new mental habit is formed. Yep. And therefore, this is why I chose 21. And with the power of community, I'm sure it's going to be brilliant. And I'm really looking forward to the last day when people are going to say, yes, I did it. I overcame my greatest fear. And I'm really proud and happy to have participated in this challenge. This is my dream. I want everybody who's involved to work through their fears and watch these videos and get inspired and get motivated and educated and apply all the tips and towards the end to conquer their fears and go out into the world and speak their truth and be who they really are. Well, that is amazing. And to help your community with that, I have a recording called Alignment which is all about putting people into a state of alignment with their potential. It's a naturally empowering recording. Um, it's not about going into fear, but it is about going into your power, which is the best way to confront fear. And so your people can download that for free from my website as a gift to you and to your community. And um, do you want me to give the website yes, now? Yes, please, yes. So that would be www.freemindproject.org. And then that recording is on the We Are One site, so that's forward slash We Are One, all one word. And if you go there, then you can, you can see the link to the other recordings there. Thank you very much, Tom, for joining us. It's been an amazing conversation. I'm really grateful for the insight and knowledge that you share with us. And I'm looking forward to your next We Are One party. It's been yeah. Great. Um, and thank you everybody for watching today's interview. I hope you enjoyed it and that you start applying some of the tips and techniques we discussed in your daily lives. Um, if you like this interview, share it on your social media. Uh, let your friends know that you're participating in this amazing online challenge for fearless warriors. Sign up to my YouTube channel, Journey to Bliss, and uh, click on the link below to get your free Bliss Blueprint with the three, radical, with the three stages of radical transformation from within. 
I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!